you got your Bible, it's in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, 38, 39, three verses. So you can just read it out loud if you want to with me. We'll go through it quickly. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, stonest them which are sent unto thee. How oft would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens into her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And he ends that chapter of, of pretty much scolding them. I think he announced eight woes in the scripture there against Pharisees and hypocrites and people that were not really in this to be serious. But the one thing that I want you to see out of this tonight is what a loving, caring Savior that would cry over us, that would pray for us, that would love us. Amen. What is man, David said, that God is even mindful of him or the Son of Man that he cares for them. I, I, I don't want to spend too much time there, but I want you as Christians, if you're right with God and you know that you know that you know that everything's all right, you could sing that song if somebody were to sing it tonight. It is well with my soul that I want you to just understand what a caring and loving Savior that we have. We see that in Isaiah 53. I think that's one of the scriptures I'm reading tonight, some of it anyway. But I want you to see this. But if you're lost or if you're playing the hypocrite tonight, if you want everybody to think you're something and you know in yourself you're not where you need to be with God, and I want you to know that uh, maybe this is for you. God, help us not to be one who would not. Amen. We used to sing a song a good bit. hadn't sung it in a while. But it just said, I'd be willing, Lord, to run all the way. If I falter while I'm trying, don't be angry. Let me stand. I'd be willing, Lord, to run all the way. Don't ever be one of them that would not. If God tells you to do something. Uh, you know, you could laugh, but if God tells you to give me $100, don't miss God. Amen. I'm just kidding. Amen. If God tells you to walk around the church, don't, 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 would not God. Amen. You'll get in trouble if you would not God. If God wants you to do something, you better do it, even if it is give somebody some money. Amen. God has been so good to us over the week. Let me just tell you this. I, I, I just reminded every day. Betty and I were at a restaurant, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday of last week, eating breakfast, and uh, the lady come over and pulled the bill out from under my arm. I just put my arm down on the table. I didn't realize I had it under my arm. She said, I got to get this, and she took it over to a man, and God help me, Betty, we've never seen this man before. And he's the one that paid for our breakfast. The only thing I could think about is maybe he'd seen me on TV, but other than that, it had to be the Lord. And then... The other, I guess it was uh, over the weekend, we went somewhere and somebody said, just feel like giving you some gas money and give me $100, you know. Somebody that I hadn't only known but a couple visits or a couple times. Somebody else walked up and said, y'all ever go to the Texas Roadhouse? And here's your gift card for $50. And then we went to buy something at a business the other day and Betty wasn't real sure whether or not that um, we were in agreement and, I said, go see how much it is. She come back and said, they want $150. I said, well, that's all right. Just go ahead and get it. She went back to get it, and they wouldn't let her pay for it. I said, we don't want you to pay for it. We want to give it to you. So from Monday to Monday, I think we got about $325 just give to us. Amen. Some people work and don't get that much money. Give to them. You know, isn't the Lord a good Lord? I mean, I didn't need gas money, and I really didn't need that meal we was eating, but I had the money to pay for it. I wasn't the one in there. And we decided that we had the money to buy that item. And, and, you know, the Lord just is a wonderful God. But far before you ever get to the good things of life and the blessings that he blesses us with daily, David said daily he loaded me with benefits. Amen. But before you ever get to that, that, that he reached down his hand one day and saved us. What a loving Savior. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you that you'd help us that feel like we're okay in the Lord, and I do tonight. If I felt like there was anything I need to do, I wouldn't stand up here and preach tonight, but I feel like my sins are all forgiven tonight, and I make a lot of mistakes, And 
probably complain too much and do a lot of things I shouldn't do, Lord, but I know that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and as Betty sings, sometimes I got to be there in good standing. I got to know that my name's there and that everything's all right, and I know that it is tonight, but even to me, God help us not to ever be the one who would not whatever God wants me to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I mean, we could, you may be seated, wave at somebody, shake hands, hug necks, whatever you'd like to do. <clears throat> we wave at those streaming because that's all we can do tonight, but we appreciate you so much. Amen. Amen. But it's hard to get away from that. Uh, what a loving Savior. Uh, I, I used to love the song when the Savior reached down for me he had to reach way down for me cause I was lost and undone without God or his son and he reached down his hand for me hallelujah didn't know I was going to sing that but I'm telling you I'm, I'm on that part about what a loving caring savior to cry over us, to pray for us, to stand by our side when a lot of times we, most of the time, we don't deserve him to be by our side. He's just there to help us through every trial, every stress test we have, every trouble that comes our way, every crisis that comes our way. And every once in a while, he'll give us a refreshing service like Sunday night and give several people here a Bethesda night amen when pool of bethesda night when they got touched i feel like about everybody it was one good thing i saw that don't hardly happen a lot but everybody came everybody was interested in a pool of bethesda night and i think you've heard testimonies that we got it but i've been preaching a lot here lately to the lost people and uh, i'm very burdened for these people amen that if the trumpet would sound right now they would miss out on the rapture and not get to go to heaven with us. And I don't know if you can say that or not, but some of them's in my family. Some of them uh, bears our names, and, and, and we love them, and we don't want any of them to be lost. That's why I've been preaching like this. Seemingly, they are lost, many of them, and don't even seem to recognize that they're lost. Amen. You got anybody like that? Try to talk to them and, they act like you're not even talking to them. What weeping we see in verse 37, Jesus wept, thou killest the prophets. The explanation of his grief was because of their sin, killing and stoning the prophets. If Jesus thought enough to send you a messenger, don't stone and kill him. Amen. Just if you don't want to accept it, you ought to be very uh, thoughtful about what you say and what you do because you know, you, 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 you can turn the messenger away, but don't turn God away. If you turn God away, he may not ever knock on your door again. Amen. The stubbornness of people, how Jesus wanted to gather them in as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and he said those three words, ye would not. Amen. How awful that is. Amen. Their sufferings, verse 35 and 36 all these things shall come upon this generation, he said. And then their separation, he said, your house is going to be left desolate. Amen. Uh, something to think about tonight. The extent of his grief, he cried and said it twice, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Amen. Uh, understand this. The Lord wished to save everyone in Israel. And he said, how oft would I have done that? He came to them time and time again, sent a prophet time and time again, sent a messenger time and time again. It is evident that our blessed Lord seriously and earnestly wants salvation for the Jews, and I believe that's passed on down to us. He said that he would that everybody would be saved. Amen. Not willing that none should perish. He worked very hard to save Israel, to teach them right, and they rejected him, and many still do today. He did, had every, he did everything that he could have been done constantly to affect this, of them 
coming to the Lord, not to walk away from him, but them to come to him. He wept to save Israel. His tears uh, over the city sufficiently showed the sincerity of our Lord and Savior, knowing that just a few days later, if you know where this is at in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, I don't think it's but like 28 chapters long, so it wasn't very long till he would have to be crucified and that he would still be mindful of man. The songwriter wrote, Brother James Brandell used to like to sing that song. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And I believe that every one of us were. I believe that mankind, uh, he could have called heaven's angels. I preached, I believe, last week or the week before last, 12 legions, 72,000 angels, and got record of where one angel in one night whipped 185,000 men. So, so the number's astronomical that the angels could take care of, and he could have called and, and wiped them out that day, but he loved us so very much that he didn't do that. Amen. Gave them reason to be gathered under his protection. Therefore, wrath came upon them to the uttermost who would not. I feel like I could be talking to somebody. I was really concerned when uh, the the computer went out and the screens went out, and I thought that maybe we'd lost the Internet, and, and I felt like that would be as good as the devil want, that somebody that's living a life of, of, of a maybe and hope so and uh, I hope I am and all that kind of stuff will hear this word of God tonight that one day if you put it off too long, one day if you turn God away too much, you will be lost, eternally lost forever and ever and ever. Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 40, and it's not taken out of context, you can go back and read John 5 if you'd like to, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Amen. You won't come to me that I could take the sins and the sickness and the sorrow from you. <clears throat> the one song said, Oh, how much he cared for me because he took the sick sin and sorrow away from us. The expression of his grief was in his opening words in verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, it was sovereign from my heart, full of light and love. Jesus said in Luke 19, verse 42, If thou hast known, even thou, in this day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. We let the world cause them things to be hidden sometimes. Seemingly, uh, it was from a heart. Uh, seemingly, it was from a heart full of life and liberty. Jesus is the judge speaking before his judgment. You know, uh, I'm glad he's still a merciful God, and sometimes right before the judgment is poured out, he'll speak to you one more time, like he did to Nineveh. Forty days, and you're going to be destroyed. He didn't say, except you repent. You can read it. He said, 40 days, and you're going to be destroyed. And the Bible said that they repented, and God did spare them. Amen. Uh, but he does this from a heart of love and Jesus is the judge speaking before his judgment, solemn from a heart of loss. Your house is left desolate, all for their wickedness. Thou killest the prophets. There was a personal crime. Thou, they did it, personal, persistent crime. Kill us over and over, kept on killing. Pernicious crime. Who, the prophets, from where, heaven, sin unto them. Why? Because they had come for blessing. And while they were there, they killed them. Sin, provoking crime. They provoked Jehovah God in verse 38 that they were going to be left desolate. Somebody hear me. I believe that Genesis 6 and 3, uh, one of my favorite verses, uh, says, My spirit shall not always strive with man. God's not going to put up with you forever. God's not going to put up with that one or this one or the other one. Forever their day will come when my spirit will not always strive with man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Light obeyed increase of life, but life rejected brings night in your life. What warm expression in verse 37 when he asks the simple question, how long, how off would I? I would have done it. I would have saved you. I would have took you back even though you lied and 
and, and mistreated the men of God and done things wrong, I would have took you back. Uh, how oft would I? Repeatedly, I would have took you back. Oft, how often sickness, how often suffering, how often sorrow. What a welcome expression when he said, even as a hen gathers a chicken under her wings, I would have took you in. A symbol of tension, mother hen. A symbol of protection. God is our refuge and strength. A symbol of devotion. Sooner would the hen perish than to let her chicks perish. Amen. And God rather died and let you go if you didn't know that because he did. Amen. A symbol of compassion. How often would I have gathered you? There were as sheep having no shepherd. What willfulness expressed by them in verse 37. And ye would not. And the Bible said, if you harden your heart and stiffen your neck, as in the day of provocation, he said, uh, you'll be destroyed and that without remedy. How off would have they, but you would not. The Savior, note the divine passion, old Jerusalem, divine patience, kill us thou, the prophets, divine purpose gathered, divine prevention, you would not. Uh, what woe, there was eight of them, judgment awaits the the scope of judgment. Verse 36, all these things will come upon you. The solemnness of judgment, your house will be left desolate. The severity of judgment, not one stone, will be left on the other. Chapter 24, verse 2 says, amen. Proverbs 1, verse 24 and 26, because I've called and you refused. I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. I also will laugh at your calamity and mock when your fear cometh. Luke 53, 6, they know Luke 53, amen, Isaiah 53. Verse 6 through 8 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shares is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He's taken for prison for judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he shall, was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Was he stricken? Oh, what a Savior. Oh, hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. Amen. His hands were nail scarred. His side was driven. He gave his lifeblood for you and me. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. Notice what verse 6 says. If you hadn't got it, I maybe didn't turn to it. But in Isaiah 53, verse 6 through it, verse 6 said, All we like sheep have gone astray. I want you to know tonight, all we. Prayer is that we all don't go too far. Amen. That we don't miss God. That we get back to where we ought to be with God. If a backslider is listening to me tonight, why don't you just get back to God? God often reproved and rebuked you and if you turn him away one time too many and you don't know I heard it said like this if you got ten chances left and he's calling you tonight and you don't go all we know for sure is you ain't got but nine left now and since you don't know you better not let one more go by you without calling on him the hurt of Jesus was expressed in his words uh, Matthew has Jesus probably in the temple where people were milling around, discussing life and talking. His heart was broken over the spiritual plight of his people. We hear God's voice, Jesus, who was God, made flesh and dwelt among us. We hear his voice crying out in pain and grief, Old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who killed the prophet. Stone, those sent to you. How oft have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under the wings. But you're not willing. You would not. Look, your house is going to be left desolate. For I tell you that you will not see me again till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He was grieving because that condition was caused by man's humanity, humanity's disobedience and lack of faith in him and the Father. Soon after this particular incident, he will just, suffer a, a deeper, a wrestle a deeper agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, as I already said. Again, we see Jesus was lamenting over Jerusalem in Luke 19, 41 through 44. When he was come near, he beheld the city 
looked down on and wept, saying, If thou hast known, even thou at least in thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes, because uh, we're like a lot, and we took the big city and went the big way, and we would have everything we needed financially, and left God off. Amen. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round about, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, they shall not leave in thee one stone. I quoted that earlier upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. I guess there'd be a third part of this message tonight. Don't miss your time of visitation. Don't miss the time when God's going to come to you. Amen. Amen. When disciples were sad when he was going away, he gave them some encouraging words. I'll come again. I'll come again. I'll come back to you again. I'll visit you again. Don't miss your hour, your time of visitation. What a tragedy it is when God visits his people and many of them miss his visitation. I've heard a preacher make light of some dried, cold church, and he said they wouldn't know a move of God if it hit them. But it goes deeper than that. It's sad that God wants to send a move among his people sometimes, and they don't even recognize it. Take advantage of the move of God during this difficult season of life. I believe God is still speaking. Again, what a tragedy is when God visits his people and them uh, in uh, and, and, and the day of their visitation and they miss it in the, in his, in his, uh, in the company of whom Jesus addressed in the above passage were Pharisees, scribes, chief priests, and a massive crowd. Come on back to the music. Amen. Amen. Was a massive crowd there that day. Significant body of people were filled with excitement, loaded with religious convictions and public concerns that they did nothing about. Many people honestly thought they were right with God and ready for anything God sent, but how heartrending uh, that this is, that they did not recognize their day of visitation. A little time, a little while, and I won't be with you anymore. Day of visitation. They missed the day of visitation. They missed the move of God. Would it not be foolish to suppose that we are unlike that crowd and maybe in no danger of missing our time of visitation? I think if we're not careful, I think if we hadn't been careful, we would have missed it Sunday night. I think God gave me a message, a word for the hour on don't miss, uh, you know, and it could be your night of, of the pool of Bethesda night. And everybody came. I'm glad they did because it makes me feel like nobody missed that hour of visitation. And I was the one praying, but he was the one moving. The other people were praying. And I feel like God touched people the other night because they didn't miss that move of God. Would it not be foolish to suppose that we sat here like that crowd and that's not us? Amen. If we're not careful. God may have somebody to sing a song that would have really spoke to your heart if you'd been listening that would have really changed your life if you'd been listening. Maybe a powerful word from the pulpit that would have changed your heart if you'd been listening. How tragic it would be if you should receive the visitation. But others we love are responsible for would miss the Lord's coming if you miss that time of visitation. I don't think the church world, at least our church, and that's the one I see every day, every Sunday, every Wednesday and during the week. I don't think our condition is near as tragic as theirs was. But I think still we drop the ball every once in a while. Still every once in a while we just a little slack. And I pray that we wouldn't be. Don't ever be caught being the one that would not. But after hearing what Jesus said to them, we better not ever hear me ever let this happen to us let's check our own lives tonight don't wait till God says I would and you wouldn't don't wait until in the judgment he says I got somewhat against you amen 
I thought of something today. And there was an incident happened here at the church 40 years ago, I guess. And uh, something happened. Somebody stood up and said something. And a man that had been driving all the way down from Morrisville got up, took his little boy, and walked out the door. And I was preaching. I couldn't stop him. I tried to talk to him later. Had surgery about a year later, and I tried to talk to him and couldn't talk to him. He got hurt. We would come back to church no more. And one Sunday, him and his wife had problems. He got in trouble with the law. And one Sunday, his brother called and said, pray for Bill. He's in trouble. Him and his wife's in trouble, and they're about to divorce. They're fussing and fighting, and I didn't lay the phone down good until he said she shot him, brother. She stood over him and emptied the gun and killed him. There's a lot of people going to have a lot of things on their hands if they're not careful when they stand before God. You're talking about somebody? No, I'm just telling you we better be careful. We better not miss the visitation of God for ourselves, and we better not miss it for nobody else. If God was wanting to do something for Debbie tonight, I'd be foolish if I let this hour pass without laying my hand on her and say, God, do it now. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus. If God wanted to do something for you and I didn't come back to you tonight, I'd be a foolish preacher. I don't want to miss the visitation of God in my life. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. You can't say that enough. One of the last messages, that, the last one that we have recorded anyway, that Sister Malden preached here in this church a long time ago because she named a lot of people that's not here no more. But one of the things she stuck on was be sure your sins will find you out. And they will. They will. You can hide them from the preacher. You can hide it from people around, but you can't hide it from God. Someday you'll be in his presence. Amen. I want to pray for those that have been watching tonight. Just believe God to touch you tonight, whatever your need has been. Pray for those in the church. Or anybody like to stand for prayer, you're more than welcome to do that tonight. It's not the message tonight, but you could be, tonight could be your pool of Bethesda tonight.